the direction did not cast any shadows. The branches were more tightly entangled. He took a step. Silence. Welcome to this week's episode of Multiplane Tales. Apologies for the late upload. There was no Wi-Fi where I was this weekend. Anyways, this tale is called Nutrients. And dear listener, if you want me to tell your tales, you can send it to multiplanetales at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. A cool breeze rustled the leaves of the forest. Giant leaves. Lush leaves that blocked the sun's light from the plants below them. Sunless though it may be, the lands of the forest floor were as green as the leaves that blocked them. Whether it be by sheer sure determination or the consistent rain of this area, the plants as well as the animals that lived in these great woods flourished. They were resilient, for those that weren't became nutrients. So were the rules of this land. For as long as he can remember, Pax felt that story from the Forest of Warning. Now a shell of its former abundance, the forest raised the baby dwarf that had been left there by bandits. First, aiding the baby to survive. Then the consciousness of the forest led a nomadic community of flumes to find the dwarf. For decades, the flumes decided to raise the child in the forest. They also found the decaying forest intriguing. The flumes spent those years trying to create different types of fertilizer, which yield no result. They attempted different spells and rituals with the same conclusion. What they did notice is the child's affinity to the forest. Pax was a rambunctious kid, always climbing tall trees and jumping around. Though, whenever he was in danger, somehow, he was saved by what can only be described as crazy forest magic. On one of his tree-climbing adventures, Pax decided that he was going to be his branch-jumping record. He went to the place he always started. Pax took a deep breath and charged at the first branch. He leaped effortlessly through the first five. Onwards, the distance between the branches was wider. He jumped to the seventh and stopped. It had started raining, and it was pouring. It was intense, to the point of dampening Pax's vision. Already having made up his mind, he continued his challenge. Mustering up the courage, he jumped and landed gracefully on the eighth branch. Trying to pinpoint the ninth to break his record, Pax heard a voice in his mind. Get down, wolf child. The storm is going to make your escape dangerous and foolish. Jeffrey, the eldest of the flumes, told Pax from the ground. Soon, Pax thought back. He took a few more deep breaths and braced himself. He dug his feet into the woods, prepared to use all his remaining strength. But before he could make his jump, the world turned upside down. The rain had already drenched his face before he even realized that he was falling. Jeffrey tried floating in his direction, but he knew that he could not make it fast enough to catch him. Pax closed his eyes, scared. Right before he hit the ground, a powerful gust of wind caught him in a stream of air until they drifted him into a patch of leaves. He opened his eyes in amazement that he was still alive. Pax got up to check himself for injuries. Just as he thought, he was completely fine. He looked over towards Jeffrey, but saw nothing. A howl of an animal whistled through the leaves behind him. Looking around him now, Pax noticed that the trees around him weren't reacting to the wind. They were going much slower than the speed of the wind. He heard another howl and looked in that direction. The direction did not cast any shadows. The branches were more tightly entangled. He took a step. Silence. He could still see the trees moving, but there was no noise to them. He felt drawn in. He took another step, getting faster with each step he took. Dodging branches as he ran, he made it to a clearing with the moon shining down on an animal. He cautiously approached it. A dark, slender, multi-tailed black cat laid at the center. The animal was huge, and it was breathing, deeply, but weak. As Pax looked to find the animal's face, he saw it had been slashed in the guts. Its fur was matted with its blood. Some of it had dried up from the heat emitted by the moons. Pax laid his hands on the beast, and it lifted its head to look at him. I'm sorry you were hurt, but I'm happy to help you. He placed his other hand on its head and closed his eyes. His hands became translucent as his hands sank through the beast's flesh. It let out another howl as the life was drained from its body. Pax could feel the beast's soul leave its chilled remains. He muttered a few more words under his breath. Seconds later, mushroom and other forms of fungi rapidly covered the body of the displacer beast, quickly dissolving its body back into the ground. Pax could feel the energy of the creature spread throughout the parts of the forest. Before being able to process his actions, Pax found himself in front of Jeffrey who was surprised to see him there. Jeffrey questioned Pax about what happened after the wind caught him. Pax told him about the experience. He told him how it sort of felt like a dream or a vision. Worried, Jeffrey brought the boy back to camp to let him sleep. The moment Pax closed his eyes, he found himself back in the dark moonlit clearing. Nutrients, he felt from the trees. His feet dug deeper into the soil until it reached a mass of roots. He felt the excitement of the plants from his gift. They looked more vibrant around him, reflecting the moonlight with the lighter shade of gray. Connected with the earth, he noticed a brittle dry tree. Its branches cracked from the pressure of the wind. The speed of the trees around him slowed once more. 
moving as if they were wading through molasses. Pax stood there as he felt the roots of the trees move beneath his feet. Faster than they should be able to move, the roots sprouted from the ground around the brittle tree and wrapped themselves around it. They fastened their grip until it snapped into hundreds of pieces. Branches, roots, and vines alike all reacted to the tree's death, all of them fighting for the biggest part of its remains. All the plants that were able to snatch a piece were soon swarmed by fungi. It grew everywhere, encompassing the entirety of the organism before revealing a right away of mushrooms. They inflated, releasing spores into the forest. The yellow dust blinded Pax for a moment before being whisked away. The trees that feasted were noticeably stronger looking than their counterparts, deeper shades of brown with fuller leaves. Pax does not know how to explain it, but he felt the focus of the forest suddenly turn to him. He felt the pressure of the wind hit his skin harder, like little needles prickling his skin. The roots under his feet entangled themselves around his legs, rendering them useless. Pax looked around and nodded his head. I understand, he thought. The forest felt less violent after that. He was brought to the camp where he saw his body sleeping with the floops around him communicating. He walked to his body and bent down to touch it. He opened his eyes to the sunlight being blocked by a couple of gigantic leaves. He rose to prepare for the day. The community of floops were assembled in the center. When they noticed Pax, Jeffrey moved towards him. Dwarf boy, looking amongst the forest, we have noticed parts are starting to grow. Therefore, our presence here is no longer needed. We feel the mood towards us has shifted, and we would rather be safe than sorry. He laid his tentacle on Pax's head. I feel that you want to stay, don't you? He asked. Someone must help replenish this land. Jeffrey glowed with understanding and left the young dwarf in the forest of warning. At least take this to remember us by. The flump gave him a bag of holding. You can just keep putting stuff in it. He floated away laughing. Pax was left by himself. He quite liked it. For the next few months, he would maintain the forest. Pax would pick up any trash that would make it in and help animals solve their problems as well as help the forest grow. Going on years of tending to the forest, Pax had learned how to harness the power the forest had granted him. He learned that he was stronger in the forest than away from it, and he could feel his abilities become limited. He first experienced it when he helped his great friend Noba. Pax was doing his daily tasks until he ran into a murder of ravens. One of them flew directly into him and started pecking at his head. Okay, okay, I'm listening. What might I help you with today? Pax asked. My child is lost, he was told. Can't they just fly back? No, she's blind. It will take her more time to fully adapt to her senses. Pax took a deep breath. When's the last time you saw her? Last night, before you went to go annoy the elves in the near town, answered the raven. I'll go find him. He leaped down from the branch he was on and landed on the ground as a hound. Following the smell of the raven, he was led to the edges of the forest. Pax looked back towards the forest as he got closer to the edge. He hadn't left the forest of warning since he'd been there. Pax could feel butterflies in his stomach as he took his first step out of warning. Something in him wanted to turn back. He could feel his connection with the forest slowly fade with each step, but he kept going. He focused on the lonely little raven that was lost in trying to find its way home. He closed his eyes to try and hone his sense of smell. To his surprise, he believed that he heard the cry of the raven. He burst into a sprint on all fours. He didn't know how long he ran. He just kept going and going till he got closer to the sound of the crying raven. He ran into the outskirts of an elven town. It was protected by a semi-transparent magic barrier with a few guards close to the entrance. Still in dog form, he went to hide in some bushes due to some commotion near the gates. He spotted all the guards huddled up in a circle. You must have gone full senile, said a guard. No outside animals in Cedar Falls. Pax noticed there was an individual on the ground in a protective position. Please, said a feeble voice. This little one is hurt, and we can save it. You, you couldn't even save the ones you loved, said another as he kicked the feeble person. The rest of the guards laughed as they joined in on the kicking. I mean, why don't you and that stupid raven just die? I mean, you could see the people that actually care for you again. Pax finally noticed the raven that was under the old elf. The elf was making sure that none of the kicks would reach the raven. Pax growled, but he stayed still. He never wants to get in the business of normal mortals. This went on for a surprisingly long time until the guards got tired of hitting the man. They lifted him up and threw him away from the town with the raven in his hands. If it was up to me, I would have banished you centuries ago. One spoke. He is just a liability at this point. The old man rose from the ground and headed in Pax's direction. Same time tomorrow, yelled another guard as they all laughed. The man stumbled far enough into the forest to be out of the eye of the guards. Pax took that chance to jump out of the bushes, growling. Well, hello there. The old elf kneeled down and offered his hand to the hound to smell it. Are you hungry? He asked. I'm sorry I don't have any food with me right now. 
If you're still here, tomorrow I could bring you something. Right now I'm just trying to help this bird. Pack stopped grounding and looked up at the elf. He could see nothing but kindness in his eyes. He reverted back to his normal form. The old elf gasped. Well, that's something you don't see every day. I am the dwarf boy, and I have been sent to find that raven in your hands. Is is that your name? The elf asked. That is what I've been called since I could speak. The elf nodded. Hmm. I'm not saying I don't trust you, but I want to make sure this bird gets the proper help. I will heal it and bring it to its mother, Pax said. But how would I know? Fine, Pax said. Just come with me. Okay, the old man said. Just follow you? Get on, Pax replied. What? said the elf. Pax turned his back towards the elf and turned into a horse. He looked at the elf and gestured for him to get on. Once he felt the old elf's knees grip his side, he made his way to the forest. The old elf talked the entire way there. Pax learned about his now-deceased family and his unusually long life even for an elf. He even told him how he always wanted to leave Cedar Falls because he didn't belong, but how he was always too scared to do so. A couple days later, the three arrived at the forest. The baby raven started jumping in the elf's hand. Pax gestured for them to get off. The old man got down and approached the forest. Oh, wow, he said. Pax reverted to his normal form. He moved past the old elf towards the forest. The other two caught up. Like he still had his dog senses, Pax tracked the group to the murder, where he found the mother. After a long chat, the baby was returned to her family. After the reunion, Pax returned his attention towards the elf. Droplets of loneliness found their way down his wrinkled, leathery skin. I, I want to see them. Bawling his eyes out, he grabbed Pax for a hug. Surprising to even him, he returned the hug and held the old elf tight. Moments later, Pax pulled away and looked him square in the eyes. Are you ready? He asked. Pax sat the elf down at the base of the tree. The ravens gathered with curiosity. I have been ready, answered the elf. I don't know what it is about this place, but I like it. I like it a lot. You know, you should have a better name than Dwarf Child or Dwarf Boy. You're not even a child. Oh. I don't have any other names, Pax said. Well, how about Pax? A solid name for a solid lad. I like it. I'm now Pax. The old elf smiled. That was my son's name. His facial expressions made it clear he did a mental double take. Or was it mine? As the frost from Pax's hand reached his face, he took his final breath with a wide smile on his face. Pax felt his soul leave his body. As he had done many times before, a myriad of mushrooms grew from his body in an array of colors and shapes. Pax pulled back. A single tear evaporated the moment it hit the ground. He returned to his camp and slept. The following day, the forest evolved. Every plant and animal that Pax laid eyes on looked healthier than they'd ever been before. He could feel the consciousness of the forest was just stronger. He returned to camp. He gathered all he thought was important, including his bag of holding. He went to the edge of the forest and started moving towards the direction of the elven town. With the power of the forest, Pax had only one goal on his mind. Time to gather some nutrients. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Multiplane Tales. If you want to share your story, you can send it to multiplanetales at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this tale, share it with your friends, family, and adventuring party. And if you can, please leave a review to help this reach the entirety of the planes of existence. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter for teasers and updates. Again, thanks for listening, and return in a fortnight for the next episode. That's two weeks. Bye!